this is the fortress expansion nest. Uh, you've got the XL mini hearth on the left and the fortress form carrium on the right. And we have a Laceous species inside of this uh, combined formicarium at this point. Uh, we don't have an, uh, an exact identification for the uh, species. Uh, we haven't gotten one uh, under the microscope for someone who is qualified to tell us exactly what they are. Um, but so for now, we're just saying this is a Laceous species. And uh, we've got them uh, now spread out uh, across two formicariums, mainly in the two water tower areas. This is the water tower area uh, in the fortress. And they seem to be sec separating their uh, larvae into this formicarium. And then they've got the pupae and the uh, still in the mini hearth XL on the water tower. So it's going to be a lot more fun now for us not quite as difficult to feed them with a shorter mini hearth forging area, although we're still going to use that. Uh, probably use that for liquids and apples, and then use the forging area for the fortress. Uh, and, and there you can see all their pupae in the mini hearth side. Um, you can see we've fed them some cricket pieces, and they're just now dragging some of those pieces back into the nest. It's always fun to watch these scenes with a single worker trying to drag something a lot heavier than she is. But um, this is uh, how we started out before we joined them. And they were all just in this one form of carrier. This is a mini hearth XL. So to get that process going, we just started getting the uh, feeding dish out and getting all the workers back put in. Every time we open it up, we, we have one or two get out. It's usually not a big deal. Um, just putting them right back in the foraging area is never that challenging. But uh, as the colony grew, it was going to become more and more of a problem for their health. Uh, the humidity would get too high. There's just not enough empty space for them. Uh, here is the floor, which you can't see in that first shot. And the entire floor is just covered with larvae, workers, and pupae. And they really don't have any room. This is a husk of a mealworm that they've actually started using as uh, storage areas. Um, and they've done that with uh, uh, other items we put in there as well. This is a cool shot. You can actually see the size of some of the workers compared to others. Look look on the left side of your screen there. Um, again, this is the water tower area where they've got all the pupae. The queen usually stays in the very, very back of that area there. Didn't want to bother them too much to get a good shot of her because we are trying to move them. Um, so basically we were just going to connect it to this. Uh, this is the fortress portion of the fortress mini hearth XL expansion. Uh, you got magnets on that side to connect to the XL mini hearth. The base is designed a little bit differently so it can accommodate the uh, bottom portions of the adjoining of the adjacent uh, formicarium, the mini hearth XL, so those two don't collide. We had to cut those bases off a little bit, so you can see the little different change in design there. Um, then you just remove the plug, um, and we're going to get started here setting this up where we connect them. So you can see the four magnets there connect to the four magnets. Actually, that little setup would connect to any of the four magnets on any uh, Mini Hearth XL or Mini Hearth Modular standard size. So we basically are just going to put a tube in between the Mini Hearth XL and the uh, Fortress. But what we're going to do first is we're going to use a nest mate. And we're just going to jam that nest mate in that opening on that side. And this is going to keep the ants from running out. Um, so they're so you'll see what happens here. We just put the nest mate in really fast, and then all the ants, they their tendency is just to run out and kind of protect the queen. They want to, this is a defense mechanism, uh, defense behavior. They, um, and of course, again, we have a couple of escapees, but this time we take those escapees and we put them in the fortress foraging area, which we've lined with fluon already. So they already start to build up some traffic between the two areas, uh, which is great. So you can see here, they can't get out. Um, and after a few minutes, they're going to calm down. They're going to go back into their nest where they want to. And then that's going to allow us to clip that off and um, make a shorter connection. The plug, like you see here, we just put that in the fortress foraging area. The reason we did that, again, is just to get more workers with more traffic in that foraging area. 
Uh, I found that the quicker you get traffic built up within within the new fortress, the new forging area, the new formicarium, whatever you're trying to move the, your ants into, the better things go, the quicker the move uh, happens. So then we just slid them together after we use some scissors to cut that nest made in two. And then now the two forging, uh, two fortress and the XL mini hearth are now connected. So we took that tube again, all the ants that were attached to it, we put that in the foraging area of the fortress. So now you've got a good 20 to 30 workers running around in there and they're gonna start to explore and make um, some trails, some chemical trails that will uh, help the other workers um, find each other and uh, follow one another. And uh, here we're just filling up the water tower so it becomes nice and humid and uh, we'll get the ants to move in, start moving in on their own here. We're really not doing a whole lot other than just setting up the formicarium and connecting the two. Um, there was a little bit of a sweating se session there when you take that tube out because you never know quite how that's going to going to go you got human hands and of course we're not always accurate but as long as you stay patient and relaxed and know that anything that happens you can deal with even if a hundred ants were to escape you know you want to kind of prepare for that idea ahead of time and know that okay well I'm going to use this container we got flu on coating everything um, so it, it went really smoothly actually so you can see they're just now kind of doing their exploration. We've got some ants in the foraging area. Everything is open so they can travel freely to all parts now. Uh, so an ant from the foraging area and the mini hearth could get to the foraging area in the fortress, which would be the farthest distance from two of the four areas. And they start to explore pretty quickly. Um, so another thing that we like to do is keep a cloth in front of the fortress where we want them to explore and and not really put a big bright light on the on the mini hearth xl because we want them to stay in there we anticipate that they're going to need both areas and that's the whole purpose behind this setup is that it's not that you're moving them you're just giving them a bigger area to connect so now they have one bigger nest area using both formicarium and then they have two uh, forging areas so uh, this forging area, usually the bigger one I use for protein sources such as crickets and fruit flies and mealworms um, to get some traffic built up. Uh, we go ahead and start feeding them in the new one. So they're going to go from where most of the colony is already in the, in the mini hearth XL and they're going to travel through the nest area of the fortress and into the foraging area of the fortress and that will uh, help keep the uh, recruitment going through that area and it will uh, it seems that when we do that that the colonies move faster and they settle into the new areas uh, more quickly and it doesn't take long you can see just a little bit of a, a smell from that honey and the worker started to get uh, other workers and uh, before long it was it was uh, crowded around the honey
one of the key elements to becoming an ant, a successful ant keeper is getting your founding colonies and queens set up properly. So we use primarily mini horse, and you can see this is a Campanus cremates colony inside of a mini hearth founded in 2018. What you see here is some of the best founding colonies we've ever had in this video. Here's Campanotus castaneus. Um, these ants are more nocturnal. Again, a large carpenter ant or Campanotus species. All the ants you see here are local to Raleigh, North Carolina. So these are very different in captivity. They are nocturnal, like I said. They do not um, forge out as much during the daylight. Here's Campanus pennsylvanicus. They are a black uh, carpenter ant and very fast growing for carpenter ant species. Um, this colony is just exploding. Um, for a one-year-old colony, this is a really good growth for them. So we're getting ready to move them into something a little larger before too long. Um, it's really easy in the mini horse to feed them. Uh, a little um, setup that we've come up with this year, and you can see here in this video, clip is the Genesis test tube system. We've got lots of carpenter ant queens that we've caught in the month of April set up in these habitats and I really wanted to just share share with you some of the video footage just to let you see how they were doing. Um, really good uh, starts for these queens. Uh, they all seem to take to the idea uh, of you know these inserts the way we were hoping they would and they've got nice little brood pile started. Uh, these next few uh, queens and colonies you see here are Formica subsericea. These were caught in 2018 um, and these first workers uh, are raising their next batch of brood and we're gonna have to move them out of here pretty fast because they're gonna get too uh, too difficult to maintain inside of a test tube environment. But the Genesis test tube system seems to be working really well, especially for medium to large size ants. We have not had the chance to really test them thoroughly with smaller ants, but we've had some good feedback from those um, who have. And, uh, you know, it's going to depend on the species, especially with smaller ants, how that works out for you. Mm -hmm.